Hey guys, and welcome to this video on big O notation. So in this video, we want to show that a function f of n, which is equal to n times c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1, is big O of n. And of course, c subscript 2 and c subscript 1 are both constant variables. Now, in the green rectangle, I have the definition of what it means for a function to belong to big O of another function that we call g of n. And it states that f of n is big O of g of n if our function f of n grows less than or equal to some constant uh, value that we call m times our function g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to some constant value that we call k. So both m and k are constant values. So let's go ahead and get started by first identifying our function f of n and then identifying our function g of n. So our function f of n is pretty easy to see from the problem is equal to n times c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1. And our function g of n, although it may not be as obvious, is also from the problem above and it's just equal to n. And I get that from here. Okay, and that corresponds with the definition g of n there. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the equation from our definition and try to find a value k and m that makes this statement true for our functions f of n and g of n. Okay, so I am going to just put equals here. And instead of f of n, we get n times c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 is less than or equal to m times n for all values of n greater than or equal to some constant value k. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase our function f of n and our function g of n from up top just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Okay, so now where do we start? Well, we can do a few things. One thing that we can do is we can guess a value for k and a value for m that will make the equation true. Or we can choose a value for k and then solve for our constant value m. All right, and that's what we're going to go with. We're going to choose a value for k and then solve for our constant value m. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to choose for k to equal 1. And now if I rewrite the equation, we get n times c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 is less than or equal to m times n for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so now since we're solving for our constant value m, I want it on its own side of the equation. So I'm going to divide both sides by n. And when I do that, I get c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 divided by n is less than or equal to m for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And again, I just divided both sides by n. All right, so now this is going to be a little tricky here. What we can see is, we can see as, as the value n increases, our, our value c1 or c subscript 1 over n decreases. And I will show you that. So remember that we want this to be true. Uh, we want, let me highlight this a little bit. We want this equation to be true for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. Okay? So that means that n is going to keep increasing starting from 1. It's going to keep increasing. It's going to keep incrementing. So that means that we'll get c1 
or C subscript 1 divided by N. So we'll get C1 over 1. We'll get C1 over 2. We get C1 over 3. And I'm using the term C1 and C subscript 1 interchangeably here. We'll get uh, C1 over 4. And you can see that it just keeps decreasing as we continue on. Okay. And what we can do is we can plug in a value for C subscript 1 to really, really see this. So let's say that C subscript 1 is equal to 10. Then we get 10 over N. And so we get 10 over 1. So that's equal to 10. We get 10 over 2. That's equal to 5. So we can already see that's decreasing. We get 10 over 3. And that gives us an even smaller number than 5. And we get 10 over 4. Four, so that gives us 2.5. That's a number even smaller than 10 divided by 3 and a smaller number than 10 divided by 2. And so we can see that that value continues to decrease. So that value will be at its maximum at the very beginning when we have C subscript 1 divided by 1. That's the maximum that that value will be. So knowing this information, we can rewrite our equation. So we get C subscript 2 plus C subscript 1, because we know it's going to be no bigger than C subscript 1. C, C subscript 1 divided by N will be no bigger than uh, C subscript 1. Is less than or equal to our constant M for all values of N greater than or equal to 1. So this means that we can choose our constant value m to equal c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 or any value greater than that. Okay? So I'm going to put that over here to the side. We're going to choose m to equal c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 when k is equal to 1. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the equation. All right, so what we had, and I probably shouldn't have erased everything. So we had C2 times N, or N times C2. So we had N times C2 plus C1. And again, I'm using C2 and C1 interchangeably with C subscript 2 and C subscript 1. It's less than or equal to... Well, we had m before, right? We had m times our g of n, which was n, for all k, I'm sorry, for all n greater than or equal to 1, because our k value equal 1. We chose for k to equal 1. But now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in for m. We're going to substitute in c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1. So we get n times c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 is less than or equal to c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 times n for all n greater than or equal to 1. All right, and what we get here is we get n times c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 is less than or equal to uh, n times c subscript 2 plus n times c subscript 1 for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And we can subtract n times c subscript 2 on both sides, or from both sides, and what we get is c1 is less than or equal to n times c1 for all values of n greater than or equal to 1. And this is true, right? If n equal 1, we just get uh, c1 is less than or equal to c1, which is true. If n equals 2, we get c1 is less than or equal to 2 times c1. If n equals 3, we get c1 is less than or equal to 3 times c1, so on and so forth. So this is always true. So I'm going to put a check mark here. Always true. So we now have proven... I'm going to put three dots for therefore. Therefore, uh, we have shown that 
our function f of n belongs to or is, that's the symbol for belongs to, big O of g of n, which implies, the arrow means implies, that n times c subscript 2 plus c subscript 1 is big O of n. Okay, and that, oops, did I just erase it? I did, so let's put that back. That imply, I mean, that is always true, and that is our answer, and that's it for this proof. So thank you guys for watching. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button to subscribe to this channel for more videos on topics on discrete math and computer science. And if you enjoyed this video, please share it.